Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'd like to welcome you to episode 41 of Doodle Gems. In this episode, we're fulfilling a community member request. Someone in our community requested Unikite. I'd never heard of it before. I had to find out what it was and I loved it. So I figured out how to do it and you get to do it now. Come on and see how easy this is really going to be. Welcome. Let's get started here. We're going to be using Thanks for joining me. I'm so glad you're here. And you have already seen the list of pencils that we're going to be using. I am just going to get started here right away. This stone is so pretty and I was so excited when a community member requested that I find out about Unikite. And I was a little bit hesitant. I wasn't sure about it because I haven't ever seen this stone in real life before. So what I'm going to do here is I am making sort of a teardrop shaped cabochon. And I'm drawing my outline with the goldenrod. This stone really doesn't have any yellow that looks truly yellow. But by using a yellow or orange, well, yellow or gold color to lay in some of my lighter areas, when I bring the green colored pencils in, I will have yet another variation of color. And so what I'm going to do here is lay in just a few of the highlight type areas. This stone is really very pretty. It is a primarily green and pink or pink and orange, green, pink with a orangey tone to it, stone. And it is made from granite that has been hydrothermically changed underground in hot, hot area, thermally active area at one point. The stone went under a type of metamorphosis or change. I love that word. I loved the word metamorphosis when I was in grade school. When I found out that it meant a change to something new, that was just, it was like magic that something could happen like that. So now I've picked up the carmine red and I'm putting in some patches of carmine red and I'm not pressing really hard right now. I am just working some areas. So right now it's going to look kind of like a dinosaur egg. <laughs> At least that's what it makes me think of those crazy colors just sort of laying on in interesting patterns. And there's really no rhyme or reason. Just like granite in its natural form, this stone is made of several different kinds of stone. So it has the pink, which is a feldspar it has the green, which is kind of a pistachio green. Or, and it has you know, variations of dark and light, just like pistachios do. And that green is called epidot or epidote. I'm not sure on the pronunciation of that one. Now I'm going to take the apple green and go in and fill in and overlap some of the orange goldenrod areas, that goldy orange. 
just overlap some of those edges. I'm not going to overlap the green into the pink. The pink is very much like a red, so it has the property of making it darken the green or turn sort of brownish toned. And I will be taking green over some of the pink. I'll be taking pumpkin orange over some of the pink too. And I like this stone. It actually goes together quite quickly. But this is our first layer. And being the first layer, it is not as resolved. Now, the stone also has uh, quartz in it. So it can have a little bit of a sparkle and shine. They'll use the unikite in lots of different lots of different ways for being something that can be so pretty I was really surprised to find out that sometimes it's just crushed up and used as underlayment for roads because it's a very common stone back east it was originally found, okay, I've picked up the pumpkin orange. It was originally found in the Yunakis Mountains. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in North Carolina. It's U-N-A-K-A-S, Mountains, in North Carolina. And so a lot of very fancy locations back east had floor tiles made out of the unikite or the facings of stone stairways that were made out of it. I found out that the front steps of the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, the facings of those steps are made from unikite. I was, I was really surprised. Again, I've not seen it in real life. I've only read about it someplace that I'd like to go though, with all of the different gems and stones and things that they have in there, along with all the bones from the different critters and things. But It's not some place that I've gotten to. They have found it in, they have found unikite in um, a couple big quarries, I guess is what they would be, in New Jersey. I was, it's like, wow, New Jersey? Okay. Didn't know, I don't know much about the geology in the eastern part of the United States. I'm taking the marine green, which is sort of a deep green, and I'm putting some speckling of that green in. Because when I take my colorless blender, I don't want solid fields of color. It's almost like an out of focus flower garden. If you were to look across a flower garden with your eyes mostly closed, just a little bit open, you would see colors and shapes of areas of um, pattern. You would see colors and areas of pattern. And they would sort of all blur, all the leaves would sort of blur together into pools of greens and light greens and yellows and the flowers would all, the flowers would all mush together also. All right, so now I want to take a bit of that green down along here. 
Now I'm taking a little bit of the green into some of that pink. I don't want to put my defining lines in yet. I just want a little bit of the green popping up because I'm going to take that colorless blender. I need to brush some of my crumbs off. So this brush is a number 500 Grumbacher Artist Materials brush for brushing off the crumbs and things like that. And I love this. This is so nice to use just for cleaning the crumbs off your page without smearing your hand through your colors. So now I'm going to take that colorless blender and I'm blending the goldenrod and the carmine together, sort of in patches here. I'm just smoothing out some of these colors. Now, if you're liking my videos, I would appreciate it if you would click that like button. I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel so you can find out when new videos go up. And after you've watched it, if you could comment and let me know if you have a favorite stone that I haven't done yet and you would like me to try. As you can see from this one, I'm willing to try just about anything that you guys love. <sighs> All right. And then I'm going to blend some of that edge together between the colors. And now these colors sort of overlap and interlock just a little bit. Not a ton, but they interlock a little bit. Because they are granite, and granite is a stone that is lots of different types of stone all pushed together. All right, there. I'm going to go the opposite direction on some of these spots, which sort of unorganizes those colors a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and take that dark green again and push some of this dark green right up into the pinks and that dark green. What I'm doing is I'm pushing down and away this edge just a little bit. It's going to get lightened up right along this bottom edge with white. So I'm not going to push t all the way to the bottom, but part way. And that just helps to make this feel like it's a little bit more of a dimensional piece. Then I'm going to take a little bit of this, this dark green and I'm going to draw a few veining type lines through. This type of stone will crack. It is not a super hard rock. It's about um, between a six and a seven on the hardness scale. So when it's used in jewelry, they recommend that it be used for necklaces or pins and brooches. Because if you use it for rings or for the bracelets. It's a little on the soft side and it will show wear. But it makes it easy to polish in your home rock tumblers. We have somebody in the community who actually 
does a lot of polishing of stones and rocks. She was very, very gracious in sharing that she loves the Unikite and polishes it in her own tumbler. I'm taking the white and I'm putting a little bit of some highlight in here, a little bit around the bottom edge, but then I'm also stepping in about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch, whatever just sort of looks good, and giving it a softness, a soft type of highlight. Wow, that is looking pretty. So it's getting some softness here. That little bit of a highlight. And then I will take the indigo blue, my favorite, for putting in deep shadows. And the nice thing about the indigo blue with this particular stone is that if it goes up against the goldenrod or the yellow ochre, it turns green. So, makes it nice to give a little bit of definition without too much muss or fuss. Look at that. I am so excited about that. That is looking so pretty. I'm not too worried about firming up those outside lines so much. But I do want to put my highlights on. And they're going to be in that general area of those shiny bits that I just put in. So there's going to be, start my pen off the paper here. There's going to be a little one right up here, kind of a comma shape, going into a line coming like this. There's going to be sort of a smiley face shape off the other side right here, thicker in the middle and tapering off at the ends. And the ends are following the shape of this gem. And then another one over here. It's just sort of following that shape. Might even go ahead and do that. And then down here, this little line is just going to get put in and then smudged just to give a little glow. And I may take that colorless blender to use almost like an eraser with that to pull that edge back down just a bit and to push it up because the what happened was my ink went down outside of the gem. I'm not too happy about that. There we go. <laughs> the gem is almost done. I want a little bit more of a soft, dull glow right here. Just a bit of a soft, dull glow. And it's just going across all of the colors because this is on the very top. And yeah, I push too hard on my pencils. And I always have. There we go. How's that, guys? That's really quite pretty, I think. Soften out that white just a smidge. Once you have enough layers of color on, I want to shorten that up a little bit. <sighs> yeah, I want to take those out. Okay, we're going to just take those out and do them again. Okay. 
Now, doesn't that look like a flower garden? That looks almost like spring to me. And we're having a snowstorm. That's kind of ironic. All right, so let's get started on a really quick doodle. And this doodle is going to be as if this gem were hanging out on a necklace. Let me get that other piece of paper out from underneath now. And what I was using that other piece of paper for was as a um, softening board or softening paper underneath, just to give a little bit of flex. Right, we're gonna zoom out for the, there we go. All right, so we're going to do this by just taking the pen, this is the black mi Pigma Micron, and we're doing an outline. Pulling that pen line down around the outside. Just pulling it around. Look at that. And then we're going to do a parallel line around the outside. And this is the bezel which holds the stone in place. I'm just going to rotate that. It's always easier to rotate instead of trying to force your hand into positions that are too difficult to go into. So what I'm going to do is I'm pretending that this is going on a necklace. All right. And by going on that necklace, it needs some place for a cord to go through. And I'm pretending that it has sort of a tube that's been soldered to the back of the bezel. Right, like that. Okay, there, like that. And I'm putting just a little bit of shadow lines, just some hatch lines that are following the curve of that tube. And then for right here, I'll just put some lines going this way and darken that up just a bit. There we go. And now I am going to do my the fun leafy pattern that I really like. I like those leaves. I like the way they flow so organically around something. I have not pre-drawn this. I'm just drawing it freehand here. So there's no pencil sketch on this right now. You, what you see is me <laughs> figuring it out. And I'm trying to stay balanced. It's not necessarily going to happen to be balanced, but it's going to be close. So I want a little bit of interest down here at the bottom. And now I'm going to go ahead and put one more leaf in on both sides. This almost reminds me of a little bug or something like that, an insect. There's going to be another little stone on either side of that center one there. And then there's going to be a leaf that sort of swings out or a shape. I'm calling them leaves because I'm going to go and put my little center and a couple dots on each one. That's, this is just a pattern I like. You can use 
any pattern around your stones. They're your doodles, your pieces of art. And I hope you enjoy making your pieces of art. And if you would like to share them in the description box below this video, there is a list of all of the places where you can share your things with me and how to join my Facebook group. where to find me on, on Pinterest, where to find me on Instagram, where to find me on Twitter. Now, I'm not the best with all of those different social media locations, but I am trying. I am trying. So now I'm going to go ahead and do just a tiny touch of color in here. I just want to get a little bit of color on that bezel because I want to also throw some shadow down in here. So I'm using the indigo blue with that white just to do some shadowing. Makes it kind of silvery or pewter-like, just a bit. A little bit of indigo down in here on the stone, just to darken it up where it touches into that bezel. Just because it makes it feel a little more real. Take the white Soften that out on the bezel itself. Look at that. That is looking pretty. All right, and really quick, really, really quick, we're going to put a little white, a little bit of the yellow ochre, push too hard on my pencil again. A little bit of that goldenrod. We're just making a pretty little glowy kind of stone to have at the bottom there. And a touch of the indigo right around the base of that stone and on the bezel of the stone. I'm going to go ahead and just do some little hash marks on the side of the leaf nearest the gem. Sorry. <laughs> started losing track of what I was saying. So hash marks on the side of the leaf nearest the gem. So just like that. And ladies and gentlemen, friends, anyone interested, I am almost done. because I can't leave well enough alone. I want to put a little shadow line right where the leaf above sort of overlaps into the gem below, or the leaf below, where the leaf above overlaps into the leaf below. See the difference between this side and this side? Subtle. It's a subtle difference. It's not something that is absolutely necessary, but it's kind of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here 
on each of these. And with that, we have finished episode 41 of Doodle Gems. Thank you so much for hanging out. I enjoyed our time together. I hope you did. Please click that like, the subscribe, the share. Make sure you share with your friends. Sharing is caring, at least in this case. Remember to go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Bye-bye.